All right, one good thing about traveling with your travel trailer or RV or however you travel is you can pull over on the side of the road, grab yourself some lunch and coffee, which we've done. Leftover chili from last night, made ourselves a cu cup of coffee. We're heading to Proceed Death Valley. So last time we left you, I think we were heading out of Utah, skipping Bryce Canyon because of the awful weather. The weather continues to be awful. We have to drop Sequoia and Kings Canyon because they've had snowstorms all week. So we won't be able to fit that in. We we're going to go there on the way to Yosemite. Um, we have a couple of days spared and the weather has turned in our favor because it's gotten a little cooler in Death Valley. So we have two days where it's in the low 80s and not the uh, low hundreds, which it has been. So we're heading in there for two days on the way to Yosemite. And sadly, I think Yosemite is gonna rain the entire time we're there, but what can you do? At least it won't be snow or freezing. There's the inn, a little oasis to stay at on Death Valley. It's very nice. So right now we're at sea level. Out there is below sea level. That's right, that's where we're going now. What are you doing? Junior Rangers. Lovely Junior Rangers. Oh my goodness, you can even play golf out here. Who wants to play golf? Somewhere out there lies the golf course. The Devil's Golf Oh no, I don't think that's a real golf course. <laughs> It is so windy here. I can't even really open up my door and get out because the wind is like shutting it right in my face. And when you look back in the distance, you see all the dust coming in. I just spent three days in Las Vegas cleaning all the red dust and mud out of Goldie from our time in Utah. And we left Goldie in the campsite at Death Valley with all the windows open. So I guess I'm gonna have some cleaning to do when we get to Yosemite now. <laughs> recorded temperature on it, 134 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 57 degrees Celsius, that's crazy, and uh, the lucky weather we're here at that time of the year, it's still pretty hot here though, and they had extreme uh, hiking warnings, but um, I don't think it's that hot, that wind is cooling everything down a little bit out there, but anyway, I'm really glad we came now, because it's really cool. like it? Yeah. What do you think? If you could describe this place in one word, what would you say? Salt. Salty! What do you reckon? Is that a good adjective for it? I feel it's super darling. Very salty. <laughs> Hello! Alright Clyde, give me one word to describe Bad Water Basin. Uh -huh. Salty. I'll give it to you. <laughs> That's what... Salty! Oh my gosh! <laughs> I just said Cheers. that. Yeah, time for some salt on the feet and now in the mouth. I just said that. Pretty amazing. Savannah said I'm it gonna, too. I'm going to sue him for copyright. Copyright. So copyrighted me. Yeah, Savannah said it first. And here's a fun fact about the salt flats there that 
whenever there is an earthquake, because we're in California and you know that'll happen, um, the, this area here will get even lower. So there you go, the lowest point in North America uh, is getting lower. Right, so a must uh, not miss experience in Death Valley is the Artist Drive. So it's a nine mile paved one way scenic drive through the multi hued coloured cliffs. So this is going to be pretty special. I'm, uh, there's not a lot of information uh, when you come to national parks. It, the brochures they hand out, they don't give really great information about what you're going to experience and see. So I don't really know much. So it's great that we just get to go and have a surprise and I'm wondering if I'm going to be as wild as and impressed considering we just came from Utah which I think is the most colorful place in the world but I'm sure it's going to be spectacular and we're going to appreciate whatever we have here apparently there's a place you can stop called the artist palette um, so let's go and see what we've got here oh, wow look at that that is pretty spectacular around there. This is such a unique drive. I've never experienced something like this before. You have all these beautiful colors, the palettes of colors surrounding you in the cliff face, but then you go into like the foothills and this narrow little uh, pathway between them and even the beast feels small going through it. It's crazy. Really pretty. Definitely recommend doing this. We found some of her sister's boots in the back. Alright, let's zip it up. Well, the Golden Canyon Trailhead looks really cool. One and a half miles in, you get to this beautiful uh, red cathedral, which is just kind of like, looks a bit like Bryce Canyon, but just red um, canyon walls all carved and stuff. Hoping that we can get there, but with some other shoe issues, I'm not sure we will. <laughs> Lucky we found some of my sister's shoes in the boot or the trunk, she's say in America but they're a little big and her feet are flipping out. So I don't think we'll get too far, but you can actually take this trail and do a four mile loop, or you can walk all the way to Sabrisky. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Sabrisky Point, which looks spectacular. I'd love to come back and do that. And that's like three miles one way, I think. And that's where we're going to be going soon for sunset. Um, but we'll see how far we get here. But enough of me, I'm going to turn the camera around because it's really pretty. <laughs> How are those boots going, darling? <laughs> you can do it. Yay! Climbing time in your boots, darling. <laughs> can you do it? Be careful now. Oh! <laughs> We folded down the top part and hopefully they'll stick on her feet. What do you reckon, love? <laughs> oh, that was a genius fix. We're staying on. These boots were made for hiking and that's just what they'll do. One of these days these boots are gonna hike the trail with you. <laughs> it's so pretty. It's so quiet in here. You could even hear really loudly the flapping of the, ra the raven's wings that just flew through this canyon. It's really quite special.
So I'm guessing behind me there is the Red Cathedral. It looks so close, but I think it's about another mile, maybe three quarters of a mile to go, and Savannah's just not gonna do it in those boots. <laughs> we tried, she got pretty far, and at least we saw it. I'm pretty disappointed, because I'd love to do this walk. It's beautiful, but at least we've had at least half a mile to enjoy how pretty it is. I don't think it's gonna to change too much. You'll just get closer to the cathedral there, but really worth doing, save time, and bring your hiking shoes. How are you going in the boots, darling? Bad. Can you keep going? You've done a super job so far. What are you going to pack tomorrow? What are you going to pack tomorrow? Dog rocket. Savannah, when we leave the van tomorrow, what are you going to have on? Not those boots. What boots are you going to have on? Your hiking shoes. What are you going to pack? Your clothes. What about what about your new hiking backpack? Wait, are we yeah. Gonna, are we gonna do uh, maybe just a little one. Yeah. I'm not sure yet. Three strike a pose. <laughs> and how are you finding your new hiking shoes? What are they? High tech. They look good. They feel good. That's the brand. Hiking shoes. And I'm loving my new Keens. So I got a new pair of Keens for Mother's Day just the other day. And my last pair of Keens I had for six years. They traveled all around Australia with me and for like two years in the US. They are such great shoes. Excellent quality, comfortable, light and functional. Probably not. Let me see if I can climb up on this ledge. All right. Ah, Tracy Long. <laughs> <laughs> And it would be good here at sunset or sunrise. So at sunset, we're gonna get you're gonna see the colours behind me and the view for sunrise, you get the colours back there. So we're gonna come back in the morning and show you because what we can see out there is uh pretty beautiful. Oh, and that was that wall too that we would have met up with where we just were in that beautiful canyon. Now that I see that so we'll do it. But we'll show you more of that one in the morning when we come past because the sun will be shining on that ship. Welcome to Death Valley. Let's check out these awesome landscapes. Okay, so that was sunset. It was beautiful. I'm sure the colors are going to come out now that we're leaving. But anyway, we're heading back to the campsite and we'll see you in the morning. We're going to have a half a day exploring and then head on out of here. What are we remembering today? I don't see shoes. I'm worried. I'm worried. <gasps> no! Put some shoes on right now. You look like the ruler of the kingdom. Superhero. Could you shut the door? <gasps> Thank goodness. Let's go. Wow, 
Well, good morning. We made it back to Zabriskie Point. It's about 7.30 and it is just spectacular in the morning light. Um, so we can see more than what we saw last night. We can see the mountain ranges in the back. We can see the salt flats. It is really one of the best views I've ever seen here. It's gorgeous. I do recommend that you come here for sunrise. Um, with sunrise at 5.30, it's a little challenging for us um, to get moving there with the kids that early. That's why I like, I, I like winter <laughs> sunrises better. It's much later in the day. But I can imagine... Um, some of the colors of sunrise because the sun as you can see with the shadow on my face of the camera the sun is behind here lighting up this beauty so you can imagine those colors coming up at sunrise so most people will travel here in the winter so that's going to be good news if that's you because uh, you're going to have a later sunrise but uh, here in the summer it's a little bit too early but really really special 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 place Which backs ahead. It's really worth uh, making the drive out to Dante's view. It is stunning. You get bird's eye view of Death Valley and the salt uh, flats down there. And it's just so pretty with the mountains. I recommend you come up here in the morning so that you have the sun shining on the valley and you can see the mountains and the salt flats. And it's just the colors, it's spectacular. It's really, really beautiful. Now this salt uh, flat basin uh, we read yesterday is the size of New Hampshire. How amazing is that? Really, really pretty. Sunrise is meant to be nice here as well, if you want to get up that early. It's quite a drive. Uh, it takes about 40 minutes from the Furnace Creek Visitor Center to get out here. And the drive in is so pretty. You, surprisingly get a lot of green as you come in although it's been quite a wet winter so I'm not sure if it's typically like that um, and there is a series of switchbacks at the very end um, yeah just amazing and you by the way you can see the highest and lowest points of uh, Death Valley from here it's really cold so if you want to uh, get some relief from the Death Valley heat come up here winter time pack your scarf and your beanie Welcome to Death Valley. Well, Death Valley seems to have a lot of life. So I'm not sure where the name comes from, but one thing that's going to kill you in here, it's going to kill your gasoline allowance, is the cost of fuel. $6.20 for a gallon of diesel. That is price gouging at its best. They should be arrested. Scandalous. Sadly, we have to uh, be ripped off and fill up the beast with some fuel. We weren't aware that it was this expensive in here, so this is why we make mistakes to help you avoid them. So make sure that you are completely full. We were like about three quarters full, I think, when we came in. Um, if we had topped it up, we'd be fine to get back out. But Death Valley is a large national park. It's one of the largest in the country, so there is a lot of driving. And we have cut a few things out because um, the, the fuel uh, taking up too much mileage. Uh, so just that's our top tip for you here in uh, Death Valley is have a, have a full tank. Although bear in mind that fuel in California is expensive. I just remembered that. It's usually around $4 a gallon anyway for gasoline, which is outrageous. Um, but anyway, so fill up your tanks in Nevada or Utah before you come into California absolutely for sure uh, so anyway that's what you know now we stayed in the um, fiddlers camp near furnace creek furnace creek i think is the best place to stay because it's where there's restaurants there's a hotel 
here as well. I think you would be better off going over the road to the Sunset Campground, which is open all year round. All the other National Park campgrounds are closed now because it's too hot. That one's open. It's going to cost you $10 cheaper than where we're staying, and you're pretty much getting the same thing. Um, we did get some shade there, which is the ranger recommended us staying there because of the shade, but when we arrived, we tried to get in the shade and remembered that we needed to not be in the shade so that we could get solar um, because there are no hookups here. So bear in mind, these are things to consider. So if I'm going to be over there, I may as well just go and pay $10 cheaper over the road getting the same thing and the views over there are much better. However, if you stay at Fiddler's Camp, you do get access to their pool and showers. If you're staying here for longer than what we were, it might be worth it. But we were sort of not really in the campsite. We were out exploring until past 8 o'clock last night and up at 7.30 this morning. It is now 9.30 and we are heading out. We have attached Goldie. We're heading northwest out of the park. See a few things along the way. It is stinking hot already. So um, just remember in Death Valley, especially if you're coming in the summer, get up early, explore, go to the pool during the heat of the day, and then explore later in the cooler evening hours. Yep. Actually, I checked the time, it was 6.30. No, but we, we left at around 7.30 to go exploring. I promise to help you with your question. I think it's okay. Awesome. Thank you. Plants and historic objects to share with my family. Thank you. With friends and family. To be extra nice to my parents. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to eat all of my vegetables. So bad. I promise to help you. Perfect. Thank you. Plants. Thank you. To share what I learned. Thank you. With friends and family. To be extra nice to my parents. <laughs> and to eat all of my vegetables. Yay! So the girls have their new hiking backpacks with the water thing. <laughs> What's it like? Mine's coming out. Show your sister how you did it. more signs of life in the desert we have a creek or a stream running through here and we're at the salt creek boardwalk so there's an interpretive trail here what's that darling she's sticking like a cactus thorn into me please don't do that there <laughs> there are a lot of bees around here so i thought a bee was stinging me but it's only half a mile and it goes around to look in the creek and there are pupfish here Little fish that manage to survive in this extremely salty water, which is no good for humans to drink, but a lot of the animals around here rely on it. Um, so it's only half a mile. It's meant to be great for kids. We're going to go and check it out. It's very pretty. Just when you thought, thought Death Valley couldn't get any more unique and diverse, you come across a field of sand dunes. 
Um, so they've been trapped here by the surrounding mountains and as we saw yesterday there's certainly a lot of wind in this area so we have these beautiful sand dunes that they've formed. Now uh, the tallest one is a mile away so if you feel like walking a mile up and over sand dunes to get there go right ahead otherwise you can just come around and walk as far as you like and take your photos and enjoy it maybe bring a sandboard or something kids will love it they can come and play here apparently if you head out to the east you're going to have more of the sand dunes that aren't disturbed by human footprints uh, where we are right now is a very well known spot the secret is out about the sand dunes there are like busloads of uh, French tourists here and loads of tourists um, walking all over them which is fine because we're a tourist as well walking all over them but uh, so you're not going to escape the crowds but definitely come here early in the morning or late afternoon sunrise is meant to be nice here um, all the photographers come out here then but we can't always be in the right time at the right place at the right time sorry uh, so we just do the best that we can and appreciate what we see here when we get here I'm doing my part. Yeah. what do you think of the sand dunes <laughs> They're very hot, aren't they? Gotta wear some good shoes. Sand's getting in between my keens and burning my feet. You too? So that was Death Valley. Well worth coming. We're so glad that we made the effort to come here. It was really spectacular. A lot of things are closed in here, a lot of roads for road damage and stuff, so there's so much more you can do. I think we did the, the main things and most of the things that are only open at the moment. So yeah, plan your trip well, beware of the heat, the fuel prices, but you can definitely come in here and you can do it in a day too. That's it for us for the desert. We have been in the desert now since the beginning of the year, so five months. While we loved it, we've had great adventures. Go through our videos in uh, on YouTube. Check out the playlist. They're in our blog content as well. From Ar uh, Texas in Big Bend country through Arizona, um, where else? Utah, so Southern California. I think that's all the southwest states that we've been to so we've done so much and we're going to be producing loads of content on my travel blog to give you all the best tips um, to help you plan your trips to this region it's our favorite region in the u.s five months have been great but now i'm hot and dusty and i'm ready for some green forests yosemite and northern california and pacific northwest here we come who wants some forests yeah forest come <laughs> Girls, are you ready to leave the desert? I want to go to the city. Uh, city. Well, we're going to San Francisco next week, so yeah. Yeah, wish some this city life. Great. Bring on some city life. Love um, a mouthful of food. Love national parks and nature, but also love a bit of city. So there you go. Subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. Leave us a comment. Actually, you can't comment on our videos on YouTube anymore, but you can on Facebook and over on the blog as well. Um, and we'll see you in the next video in Yosemite.